Uh, I am ready for questions. Over. Mm -hmm. Hi, Paula. Yeah, it's difficult to stay at home uh, and and uh, and do what you think is a, a been normal. My advice to you is keep a routine. Do what you would do on a normal school day. Wake up at the same time, have breakfast, change clothes, and go to a different room and do do your work. Uh, and take a break for lunch, take a break where you would rotate to a different classroom perhaps. Uh, and then at the end of the day, uh, change your clothes and, and, and pretend like you're going, just arriving home. I think it's most important to maintain a normal schedule uh, to, to stay productive. Over. Hey, Seuss, that's a great question. We, uh, I've used the Astro B robot several times and they're very interesting. Uh, I actually, seven years ago, worked with the first generation, uh, kind of the uh, the parent of Astro B, which was called Spheres, and those were interesting as well. And we had uh, students just like you could can write the computer code and manipulate the, uh, the algorithms. I think that it's wonderful to see Astro B and, and with advancing technologies, uh, it could be very, very helpful for us as astronauts on board the International Space Station. Over. Hi, Yvonne. Uh, I don't think it affects our thinking, the weightlessness aspect of it. We're up here, we are we are living in our workplace, much like you guys now with uh, COVID stay-at-home rules, you're, you're living in your workplace, and uh, it, you you sometimes uh, get, I don't want to say forgetful, but you, you start seeing the same things, and, uh, and so what affects your thinking is more the fact that you're, you never leave the same building and uh, and we work very hard, and so we try we try to maintain our sleep schedule as best we can. And we have, we do have a day off on Sunday, so rest very seriously, so that our thinking is sharp, and we stay uh, ready to do work. At the Uh, I just 
did not feel sick when I was in the rocket. We, we all take motion sickness medication on right before the launch, just like you would if you were on a, a sailboat and going to the rough ocean, uh, because we don't want to be sick once we uh, get to space. We need to still perform our duties. So we do take medicine just in case, but on, this is my third mission and I have not uh, felt sick on any prior prior time. But it can happen, and it can happen unexpectedly to anybody at any time. Over. Jose Manuel, the, what inspired me most about to become an astronaut was the the, the excitement of the career, that's what first lured me to it. I thought it would be really neat to put on a spacesuit. Then I met somebody who had been an astronaut, and, and I became even more motivated. Uh, but it wasn't until I, I uh, really got serious about the application that I learned more that I, what I liked is that every every day is different. You're training a lot. Many days you're training. You're in Houston. You're in uh, Japan. You're in Russia. You're in uh, Europe. Canada, and uh, and we have many international friends and international travel and uh, training in all those places, and I find that I was very excited about that, and I do enjoy this very much about the job. Over. Well, our diet is very much nor normal as we can try without, we, we don't have fresh fruits and vegetables all the time. Occasionally we, uh, we get delivered fresh fruits and vegetables on a cargo ship that uh, arrives and, and those are the first things we, we pull out and we eat them as quickly as we can before they go bad. But the bulk of our food is made in food laboratories in, in Moscow and in Houston where uh, they prepare the food and then package it sometimes where we need to add water to the food to, to rehydrate it to make it edible. And other times it's just regular food put into a can or a bag and we just open the can or the bag and we eat it. And it has, there's meat, fish, chicken, uh, vegetables of all kinds, desserts and cookies and candies and coffee, tea, milk, uh, juices. Uh, we have a, quite a variety of food over. Uh, Carlos, if you cry in space, you're, you're, the tears just stay kind of in the corner of your eye where your tear duct is. And uh, if you did not touch it with your finger, it would just, the ball of liquid in the tear would, would grow and grow and grow uh, and then sort of spread across your eyelashes and your eye eyeball itself. Uh, I think it would be hard not to touch it with your finger before that point and, uh, and push, push the water away. But the, the, the biggest force of the water is the surface tension, uh, that, and that's what uh, drives how water behaves in space over. Luis, our spacesuit is, is uh, not entirely comfortable. It, we, it's not really designed to be comfortable. It's designed to keep us alive, and it, it's formed for when we're sitting in the space in the seat. So when you stand up and walk, it's not it's not very uh, suited for walking. It's more uh, just when you're when you're seated, and it just keeps you alive. So it's not meant to be very comfortable, but it's not so bad. Over.